This video covers our visit to the Ganden Buddhist Monastery in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. We took a trip on the Trans-Siberian Railroad from Moscow to Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, May 22nd to June 7th, 2018. The tour was organized by the Travel All Russia Firebird Tour Group. This is our third video of Mongolia, which was our fifth and final stop on the Trans-Siberian Railroad and is labeled 5C, Visit to the Ganden Buddhist Monastery. All of our videos can be seen on our Conscience Films YouTube site. This video was produced from pictures taken by Abe and video taken by me. The cameras were handheld. Tripods were never used. This is a brief introduction to this video. The most important monastery in Mongolia is this Gandan Monastery complex. Although it is usually called the Gandan Kid, Kid means monastery or nunnery, its formal name is Gandan Tegchenling Monastery. We are told it means the great place of complete joy. In the Stalin era of the 1930s, but mostly in 1937, almost all monasteries in Mongolia were destroyed. Gandan was not. The recovery of Buddhism after World War II began to take place when the heavy-handed policy against religion was eased and there was a resurgence of Buddhism, although in a very controlled way. When the present Dalai Lama, the 14th, visited Ulaanbaatar in November 2016, many thousands of believers came to pay homage to the spiritual leader. To our inexperienced eyes, the people visiting the monastery seemed to be devout believers. Dalai Lama means ocean of wisdom. Dalai is a Mongolian word. Lama is a Tibetan word meaning spiritual leader. There are over 10 temples that make up this Gandan monastery complex. The Vajradhara temple dates from around 1839 to 1841. The key attraction in this temple for tourists is a 26.5 meter or 86.9 foot tall golden statue of Avalokitesvara, a Buddhist bodhisattva. A bodhisattva is, we are told, one whose essence is perfect knowledge, an enlightened being who out of compassion foregoes nirvana, the highest place of enlightenment, in order to save others. There's a library in a building called Dedan Provan. We learned that it contains over a million silk and case sutras, which are rules or books. We only saw it from the outside. There's an important dastan, or teaching center, in the monastery complex, which was built in 1992. One would need a seminar in spiritual art to appreciate the subtleties and intricacies of what we saw and tried to capture in this video. Unfortunately, the video cannot convey the fragrance of the incense. In any case, one gets enough of an idea to realize that Buddhism has a vast store of knowledge and teachings behind it. Just how much can sink in, so to say, from a couple of hours visit remains to be seen. The takeaway lesson for us is that despite decades of repression, there remains evidence that religion remains integral to the being of the people. One can see from the video that there are many young people coming to the temples. It may be a little difficult at times to hear and understand what Atko, our Mongolian guide, is saying because of her accent and extraneous noise, but the camera and microphone have captured exactly what you would have seen and heard if you had been with us on the trip. All right, Yael, can I start? Mm -hmm. All right. This is Ganda Monastery. The compound, the wooden fence, <coughs> nicely preserved since 1838. For you, the construction architecture looks like Chinese, but in fact not. What, what I mean is the roof of the temples made in a log puzzle way. Same as gear. No single nail used in its construction. <laughs> you are seeing the symbol of Buddhism. It's everywhere here in the world. On the roof, symbol of Buddhism. You know, uh, Buddha Shakyamuni, when he achieved enlightenment uh, from animal beings, uh, the deer, female, male deer, listened to his teaching, became today's symbol. Uh, what is the middle 
that's Dharma Wheel. Dharma Wheel is actually Buddha's basic teaching, you know. But it has eight spokes. What is are they? Uh, it represents uh, right view, right speech, right uh, action, right effort, intention, concentration, livelihood, such a way it's the path to go to the enlightenment, you know. That became symbol of Mon your, no, Buddhist religion. You see the Gandang. This is written in Tibetan script. See? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Praying temple. So, Mongolian shrine, a whole country is here. The middle, in the middle, in the north. Okay, you will see. We will discover chanting ceremony soon inside. Then you can follow me. Clockwise round, we will circle the temple inside. And there is happening chanting ceremony in Tibetan language. But now, this temple is historical temple. Today it turned to cashier to finance itself. It's chanting sutras got tariff today, you know. But in 1903, he lived Dalai Lama 13. Can you believe? For several years. Uh, yeah, within Dalai Lamas, one of them are Mongolian person. Third Dalai Lama, many, many centuries ago, he was Mongolian person. But with the Mongolian leader, Gaudi Jabdundam, just two per, uh, people are Mongolians, others are all Tibetans. Like a uh, last state monarch, last Tibetan person came in five years old here, even his brother became state oracle in See? Today, no more leader. That God reincarnation should uh, dawn you know, in the future, and they should identify him. Uh, other temple, today is a library. More than one million sutra today preserving inside. But before, it remained Mongolian spiritual leaders, clothing, all these antique things. You know, in 1930s, uh, this temple is actually completely stopped, and then it turned to some Russian officials' houses, horse barns, and since 1944, things improved, you know? Yeah. You know, Gandan Tekshila Monastery got the more than 10 temples, each of them dedicated for special rites. For example, one temple dedica dedicated for uh, Kala Chakra, that's the time guard, you know, and then they offer um, send offering, you know, they create send offering. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, after, when we back, uh, I will uh, explain what's the meaning of uh, Buddhist religion. Okay. I'm inviting you inside. Unfortunately, we were not allowed to video or photograph inside this temple. What we saw were long rows of tables with many Buddhist monks sitting at them and chanting as they were reading. The monks come to the temple early in the morning and chant prayers all day long. Atko will tell us more about these monks a little later. We print or we write. We have, uh, you know, antique sutras in National Library. Library. If you see Mongolian library, it looks different than yours. All religious sutras, wrapped in a silk, you know. But the now, are Mongolian? Mongolians. This religion from Tibet, but still it's chanting going in Tibetan language. But we are translating today, in the future one day, you know. But these people are not permanent monks. They do for a few years or several Permanent months? monks. Permanent. They employ here. Their whole life. Yeah, whole life. And they live here? No, it houses thousands of monks, but since socialism here, no. So it's like a daily work. They come here, chant, astrological days all day long. And even they do a special rites, you know, like a welcoming future Buddha, they make big ceremony how, once in a year. So when they, they leave here, they just go home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they make their uh, li living to mm -hmm. eat and uh, In Mongolia, there is uh, no lama sit with the big balls, because uh, one of uh, triple jewel in religion is uh, lamas. 
So prayer know to offer some money, you know, some money okay. usually. So that's the supplement. Okay, sure. But uh, they do it freelance, you know, mm -hmm. freelance. But the people give them food? Not food, no? money, yeah, and give presents. That could happen. It's merit in our back yes, background, yes. you know. So that case we pay to the administration and they buy this uh, you know, food, lunch, you know, and the kitchen supply them. So they may have families? They may have family. You know, it depends their path. If they choose holy path, we have holy monks, vegetarians, vegans. But the majority of the <coughs> men, you know, say like um, sexual misconduct is no, one life, entire life. But being a monk wife is be busy work. A lot of prayers come. She should care God's home, prepare this rites, you know, heavenly beings, right? If we cut this karmic system, achieve enlightenment, we never reborn within this circle. And then we'll be back at home, you know. That's why they say, go to the enlightenment, meditate, you know, try to make 10 good things. We have opposite 10 negative, you know, things like uh, right view, right speech, right action, like that, you know. Ganda Monastery, you know, got the college, you know, that makes it special. And then, uh, yeah, the little monk boys practice, have you seen in the wall side where young children, yes. they are educating here, you know. Mm -hmm. But in the end of bachelor degree college, majority Mongolian students go to Tibet, make six years, three years course comes back. And moreover in Mongolia we have numerous of person reincarnation of gods. Mm -hmm. yeah? So that statue here, and here you will see in the north. Have you seen Mongolian shrine in a praying temple that mm. was in the middle? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. The, that is Vajratara. You know, the Vajratara is a tantric god. She has uh, all the ability and power of five Buddhas. Today's Buddha Shakyamuni is actually fourth Buddha, realizing his religion. Like this way, 1,000 Buddha educate us in the future, and life will be like heaven. So it's just fourth, you know, Buddha Shakyamuni. It means you Buddha, me Buddha, we all Buddhas. They say we are just sleeping in ignorance. When we awaken from ignorance, we go to Buddhahood. Hmm? Yeah. And then we met him leader. He went back, passed away. It's offering to the God. Like the colorful cake in the glass case was the God's test offering. The thing in the cup was water offering. That's test offering, you know? The smell is a smell offering, and this music is a hearing offering. God, when you see us nicely clothed, you know, they're happy, and then I offering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Ozambatar city, we have one special monastery for women. Mm. This is all for is men. New? Is that new? Like, for a long time tradition for women? It's not that new, it's not that medium, I would say. Yeah, yeah. These are Buddhist prayer wheels. If we chant Om Mani Badmiha, expect that we do in a merit for all six beings. Om Mani Badmiha. The essential meaning is for the happiness of six beings. But they also have to do this so many times, correct? Three times clockwise round should spin it. But 
praying. Praying is uh, like this. We imitate stupa in our hand. Stupa. And then over your head, in your wisdom eye, in your throat. Three times we pray. Yeah? We're for stupa in the We got stupa in the Shopping. <laughs> To write with the yellow hat. So it means 14th century in Tibet. His name is Bogut Tsonghoba. Atko was drawing attention to the origin of the Gelug, or yellow sect of Buddhism. Some have referred to this as the reformed established church of Lamaism. A man named J. Tongsahopa dates 1357 to 1419 with a Mongolian father and Tibetan mother, turned philosopher and religious leader, was the founder of a monastery in 1409 called Ganden, not Gandan, monastery. It was destroyed in 1959, but has been partially rebuilt. The Gelug yellow sect emerged at the end of the 16th century as the preeminent Buddhist sects in Tibet and Mongolia. Atko mentions the 14th century in particular in describing the origins. He started the Gilugba tradition, which is our tradition. He renewed Buddhist teaching uh, or Buddhist dispatches. He designed his own Gilugba tradition, and we say that yellow hat tradition. Okay? The Hoba composed many, many sutras. It, he made this religion more simple, you know, very simple. Mm. Yellow religion is very friendly, very simple, but there is a deep philosophy, you know. Mm. He was born in 14th century in yes. Tibet, oh. 14th century. What is the vision of the Tibet? Um, you know, when you spin the praying wheel, yeah. uh, you stay with your inner world, right? Yeah. When you chant these mantras, you concentrate in the chanting. You wow. think uh, happiness for sixpence, yes, right? Yes. It's kind of meditation, don't you think? Yes? These look reminiscent of what they call the tree of life. It looks like a tree with the different branches sticking out. Or is uh, that my imagination? Uh, there is a lot of meaning. When you see the roof, there is a free balls, right? Okay. That make a jewelry. That is uh, soil, fire, and water elements. Okay. Yeah, in the end of stick, uh, that blue, yeah. it's water. Actually, there is an uh, ocean light uh, painting with the eight steps, you know. Yeah. That is the path to enlightenment. Okay. Okay. And we have uh, actually eight official satellites. Yeah. Oh, I see the. I, Can you come over here? I see the dragon. Yes. Here it is. Okay, I'll go over there. Yeah. No, I see it now. We were talking about. We were talking about water, etc. Where is that? Right, okay. A golden praying stupa. You know, in Mongolia, the first monastery was built here in the 17th century, circled by 108 stupas. That makes uh, 400 square meter territory. Incredible. What is a stupa? Stupa is constructed for uh, historical events or its grave of religious or state figures. It means it can be a tomb of the god. Right? In our cremation center, the ash goes inside of stupa. Stupa is very holy thing, you know. Any single dust can stand in, can't stand in it. Very holy thing. It's like a grave of things. Those temples actually was built on the old spot. All temples were destroyed or burned. Like a behind the stupa, one column remained since fire. 
and people made it a wishful feeling, you know, Colombian, say their wishes. Uh, today, uh, the new temples became institutes. So in each temple happened special rites. And the actual monastery colleges that two-story yellow building. That one and administration. But today they constructed new nice temple over there where stood old Gandam Monastery first temple, you know. I hopefully it has got meditation room, lecture room and the college you know, rooms. In Gandam Monastery the Lamas monks compete with their education. It happens here. And the monks all over Mongolia comes here and meditates. Bye, good, 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 good. Thank you very much. Where are they? Where's the photographers? The photographers take I tell you here now. <laughs> Behind me? Uh, the Janrasik hmm? temple. This is a very important hmm? temple for our veneration, you know. Uh, like a wedding, graduation, comes here for great bliss. Inside, 26 meter tall statue of Janrasik god. Janrasik is a bodhisattva. Bodhisattva, it means fully enlightened being. It's not Buddha, it's just the bodhisattva. Uh, our eighth monarch, uh, aged like 80 years old his eyes became very blind you know then uh, lamas created this vision janrasik statue for him but itself love and compassion one this janrasik the aryabala with 10,000 arm actually relates to each other love and compassion birth mm -hmm. but this one for vision and it's standing. We have a sitting version. Okay? Right, yes. This is actually juniper grown in a range. Yeah. Juniper, it's it like a powder, yes? Powder? Powder, yes. Dry? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Green. The green one. You see, 26.5 meter tall statue, but the original statue was destroyed in socialism years. Maybe somebody brought to Russia, some, some other body. In 1996, we were constructed by the public donation. But the statue main frame is copper. We didn't mine in Mongolia. Copper mining donated this main frame. It's gold plated, so the surface is gold. On the body, many, many, many. One there is the God of Wisdom, third eye, the God of Compassion, and this one is a God of Protection. So they are all, in Buddhist religion, there are 10 protector gods like him, like him. Uh, this one, his name is Vajra Holder. He is holding Vajra. It's a symbol of male. Symbol of female is a bear, you know, next Indian. Uh, protection God, the view is always angry, aggressive. To be familiar with poor beings, they got this aggressive face. Poor beings, they don't know how to put that face, you know. And also, when you see the hand position, Otko is explaining a few of the mudras, or hand positions. 
we are told that mudra comes from the Sanskrit word for sign. These positions are intended to elicit a specific state of mind. Mudras apply to both the left and right hand. We say it mudra, tells something. This is a Buddha teach mudra. Uh, his mudra is a protection mudra. Meditational mudra, they never do this mudra, never do that. Such a way, a lot of hand positioning of the gods. Some gods sit, but one leg down there. It means suffering being, when they call it, ready to stand up, you know. It has a meaning, right? Mangohin actually state you, design a pure Mangohin way. That's Sanabazar's, you know, work res result. Artists make it after meditation. I would say it's more realistic. Realistic, yeah? Uh, these statues are circled in a wall site, Longevity God Ayush. There is a 500 pieces of Longevity God along the wall site. One God, but many pieces. Give us longer life. The display cabinets along the monastery walls are filled with statuettes of the god Amitabha Buddha, or Ayush meaning Buddha of boundless light or limitless life. These are equivalents of the Supreme Being. We are told that Buddhas have attained perfect knowledge by worshiping him, and they are his manifestations and prophets. Amitabha descended to earth countless ages ago and shared the sufferings of mankind for billions of years, performing countless virtuous actions as a scapegoat of all living beings, he returned to glory again. He made vows concerning the salvation of all those who trusted in him. The key element of all this is summed up by one Buddhist divine. The holy path is hard to travel and its outcome uncertain, but entrance to the pure land is sure if one will put his whole trust in Amitabha. Uh, do, you, do you know that uh, it was holder in the head got uh, the drone, you, you see? But actually it should be, some of them got five skulls instead of this jewelry. The five skull has got some meaning. Jealousy, angry, stupidity, ignorance, and greed. They tame those. <laughs> yeah? We go clockwise around. Do you know how many meters high this thing? Twenty six point five meters. But China, our diplomatic relationship actually, you know, <laughs> after his visit, when he comes here in front of this uh, Janrasik temple, he puts some lecture among Mongolian prayers. Uh -huh. I tell you, what is the meaning of that uh, lame Buddha? The Buddha Shakyamuni, uh, the date of birth, the date of enlightenment, you know, the date of death, one day. And our religious people celebrate that. This is the view of he passed away in this way. Mm -hmm. 
Now, his soul should go in the right way. That's why he closed the right ear by hand, you know, and laying down. Which one is that? Yeah. The second yeah. thing. So lying down. And in that corner, there is the statue of Buddha, Shiva the Enlightenment. Same day, same day, and in another corner, there is a baby Buddha, just we born Buddha. So triple day, same day. While walking out, I noticed the door to one of the temples slightly ajar and tried to video the candles burning in the room when the door was abruptly shut. No. Sorry. <laughs> Atko is talking about the new Mongolian airport, which will be located 50 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar and is being built by the Japanese. The statue is going to be in a 50 kilometers away here. Ulaanbaatar up there, Chinggis Khan International Airport in 19 kilometers, but this is new airport constructed by Japan. Mm. Uh, there is a comparison of world uh, tall statues. You have been in Mongolia here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe been next there time also. you will see I've that. Been there also and, there also. and some of you been both places, mm -hmm. yeah? All of our videos can be seen on our Conscience Films YouTube site. The URL for the site and our email address are given here.